Casper's number one for new country, my country, 95.5. We say that because we're kind of partial. Um, it's uh, Doc here <laughs> and Prairie Wife and a special guest on the phone. I've been bragging on this guy because I've been following him on YouTube for better part of a year. Uh, he, he describes himself as an amateur seismologist. Uh, ben Ferrello, how are you, sir? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing today? I, I'm doing awesome. I remember, I think the first time I became aware of you, I was a video you did about strange sounds at Yellowstone Lake. Remember that one? Oh, yes. I think that was one of my first videos, those uh, strange signals yeah. or whatever from Yellowstone Lake. Yeah. Well, first of all, tell me how, you, how, how did you get interested in seismology? Well, actually, it all started with my son's birth, surprisingly, on June 15, 2017, which to some of people out there, it probably has a familiar date with Yellowstone. That's when they had one of their largest earthquake storms ever. Oh, yeah, right. And I saw an article. Yeah, yeah. And I saw an article about it, right? And yeah. said, uh, large earthquake swarms spark super eruption fears. And, you know, my son was just born, my second kid. I'm like, oh, great. You know, I didn't even <laughs> really know that there was a super volcano that size in, uh, in the United States. So I did some research about it. Kind of got on, off on the wrong foot for a little while, you know, because I, I went, started getting a lot of my information from YouTube. You know, and there are some people out there who are, you know, like you said, sensationalists, you know, and... Some people who kind of blow things out of proportion, and but slowly but surely, I started actually doing my own research from uh, the seismological community, yeah. like from IRIS, USGS, and I found out that a lot of the stuff that I knew prior really was not true. Some stuff was true, yes, but some stuff wasn't either. Yeah, well, so see, pretty much that's what? yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's what actually gravitated me to you is I've watched some of the others, and I won't name names, but they know who they are. Yes. Um, oh yes, and um, and you actually you st you actually study and share the uh, the seismographs from the USGS, some of the boreholes, and yes. base a lot of what you do on science now, right? Oh yes, actually, a lot of the seismic data for the whole world is all for free on the internet. You know, it's uh, a lot. Of, it's kind of hard to find at first if you're just doing this yourself without any guide or whatever. But I taught myself over the course of the past year or so how to do this, and it's pretty easy, you know, accessing data from Yellowstone, monitoring for tremor or earthquakes or whatever. It's, it's actually pretty, pretty easy. And I even made my whole website because, to me, I got really frustrated at first, right? Yeah. I was like, you know, it's like a bunch of trial and error. And I wanted other people to be able to monitor Yellowstone without having to go through that huge trial and error experience that I went through for like a whole year, right? Yeah, I, I totally get you. There's one British website. I'm not going to name them because I don't want to give them press, but they tend to have these really sensational Yellowstone headlines. And then when yes, you actually I think I know what you talk about. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Express. Um, if um, Okay, so I guess <laughs> I'm going to name them. Um, but when yeah. you actually read the body of their story, you realize that it's not based on anything. The USGS scientists are not predicting anything. They just want the exactly. clicks. They just want the clicks. And you've done an yeah. amazing job. of. My, in fact, my wife has been following your channel. It was You actually give instructions on the programs to download to read these seismographs. Yes, yes. Yeah, I spent a lot of time putting together my website so that I could have other people actually, you know, if, if someone's going to say a super eruption is coming, you know, you, we shouldn't completely blow them off, you know, but yeah. we should actually dig into it and check into everything that people say, you know, because you never know when someone's actually going to tell the truth or someone's just wanting some clicks, right? And yeah. I did see an article from them recently from the Express page, and they said that there is a swarm of earthquakes up in Manhattan, Montana, which is far north of Yellowstone. I think the largest quake was 3.1, and they said it sparked Yellowstone eruption fears, and the scientists are worried. Yeah, and right. I thought, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and it, it wasn't even that big of a swarm. <laughs> you know, there ha there, I have to say, though, there have been some concerning swarms of Yellowstone in the past. For example, uh, the 2008-2009 Yellowstone Lake earthquake swarm, it had over 811 locatable earthquakes in less than a week, and probably maybe even hundreds more than that that couldn't be located. And the professionals said that it was possibly a dike intrusion of magma right under the lake. Yeah. It only lasted less than a week, thank God, but if it kept going and kept going and the ground started swelling even more and more, we could have seen lava flows or something. So there have been some concerning swarms before, but if there's only like a few earthquakes here and there, you know, it's not that big of a deal like some people say it is. Yeah, well, what concerns me is I actually suspect that there are some weird things going on at Yellowstone. And yes. if the time comes and we see something serious and we issue a warning, we want people to take us serious and not get tunnel vision by all of these uh, these quacks out there. 
that are exactly. It's, it's like the boy who cried wolf, right? Exactly. So was, eventually, the wolf came. I was curious. <laughs> that's true. I was curious about this. Ben, a couple of specific things that have been going on at Yellowstone that I'm I've been following. That is, last year, Steamboat Geyser reawakened after being dormant for four years. So, do you see any significance in that at all? And what you're looking at? I think somewhat, yes, in a, in a, a little bit. I uh, talked to Michael Poland. I uh, he's the scientist in charge for the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. I shoot emails back and forth to him every now and then. And Steamboat Geyser, I believe this is the largest eruptive period ever. I mean, the last eruption was, was June 19th, which was the 23rd eruption of 2019, which is the 55th eruption since it reactivated in 2018, and the record was broken in 2018. And apparently in 2014, there was a huge spike in uplift at Norris. Very quick, though. Then there was a bunch of earthquakes. The large one, I believe, was uh, 4.6 or something like that. It's pretty large. And then the uh, subsidence started to occur after that. Also in 1996 to 2000, Michael Pollan believes that there is a small intrusion of magma under Norris and that the uplift area, the source of the uplift, is starting to shallow. And he said that is, it's possible that is what is driving some of these steamboat geyser eruptions. And yeah. that could be why it's, you know, it's starting to get a little more severe. But it's strange because the steamboat eruptions, they're still continuing. I mean, I'm very surprised that they are still ongoing, but Uplift at Norris has basically stopped. Yeah. The past six months or so, it's kind of leveled out a little bit. Uplift was continuing for a while. The ground was swelling. But the past six months or so, it just stopped. This week, uh, if the reports I'm seeing on Geyser Times are right, it looks like steamboats' intervals are now shorter, where it's like every three yes. or four days now. Yes, yeah. I believe the past four or five eruptions have been within three to five days of each other, where prior to that, it was about seven to eight days. So it does seem like Steamboat is getting more active. I'm, I'm wondering, I've also seen a small swarm of quakes near Yellowstone Lake. Anything to that, you think? Oh, well, I, there there have been a lot of swarms around West Dumb and Yellowstone Lake. Huge amount of swarms. Some of them are really tiny, you know, but they're very interesting. Um, some of the swarms up near, let's say, Hebgen Lake, Maple Creek, you know, they can put out thousands of quakes within months, right? right? Thousands of small to moderate quakes. But I'm not as interested in those because I believe those are tectonic in nature. The rapid fire swarms, which I like to call them, that occur near West Dumb Lake, like Shoshone Lake, Lewis Lake, Yellowstone Lake, all the, all the lakes in the area, basically within the Caldera boundary, those are, are, are of more interest to me because sometimes, like for example, the April 11th, 2018 swarm or the July 5th, 2018 swarm, a multiple, more, I'm talking like hundreds of quakes within a very, very short time period. I believe the July 5th swarm was, what was it, 160 quakes within 52 minutes. Wow. And they, and they only reported about 20 of them, right? But obviously with the PNS wave arrivals and doing seismological analysis, you could tell there were way more than just 20 earthquakes. And there's one thing I'm not happy with, though. You know, I, I support the professionals and everything they do a lot of the time, but the University of Utah, when they're dealing with these rapid fire swarms they only report a very very minute percentage which yeah. is odd and it leads to the conspiracy theories you know coming out where they feel like exactly. that the, the 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 scientists are trying to hide something from us exactly and I, i've even talked to university of utah multiple times and they actually kind of get they they get a little mad at me a little bit because they probably think i'm another one of those conspiracy nuts you know and i'm yeah. like i'm looking at these quakes right here only only 20 quakes reported, I can clearly see over 100. And they're like, well, <laughs> some of them couldn't be located on other stations, even though they were, Yeah, you know? So I right. don't know what's going on there. They, maybe they're just shorthanded. Yeah. I don't know. But, but I'm one of my favorite YouTube guys, uh, Ben Farillo, is on the phone with us. Uh, and you describe yourself as an amateur seismologist. You do an amazing job. And with, with some of the studying you're doing, I guess the big question for a lot of us here in the Casper area, since Yellowstone is in our backyard, what yeah. do you think would be like the telltale sign that there's about to be a big event at Yellowstone? Well, my, uh, my take on it differs a little bit from the professionals. Let's start with what the professionals say. They say that they believe there would be uplift in the range of like tens of meters, right? Like multiple feet of uplift within a few years. Mm -hmm. That would be extremely concerning. Lots of earthquakes. Lots of gas output, it's, um, a lot more hydrothermal activity, a lot more geyser eruptions than we're seeing right now. I think that Yellowstone won't see a super eruption for a long, long time. That is what I believe, personally. But I believe smaller eruptions at Yellowstone, like maybe on the size of Mount St. Helens or a little bigger, that, that's not small. But for Yellowstone, you know, that's kind of small. Right. But uh, I believe those are very possible. So we need to be watching out for possibly 
uplift occurring maybe a few meters within, you know, maybe a year or so. That's not too, too much. We've seen a little bit more than that at Yellowstone, especially Long Valley Super Volcano in California. But when uplift, when the ground swells and we see large earthquake swarms occurring where the uplift is occurring and there's also a lot of gas output, increased hydrothermal activity, that is definitely what you need to watch out for. Do you remember that made-for-TV movie Super Volcano <laughs> that was on like yes. 10 years ago? And that, that movie, was one of my favorite movies. <laughs> yeah, that movie started out with a major like 6.9 earthquake near Norris. So do you think if we yeah. ever got like a big quake that that could actually cause something? I believe, yes. I believe it is possible because earthquake, let's say uh, there is uplift occurring. Actually, I don't think the quake itself would cause something. I think the, the cause would cause the earthquake. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like when the ground swells, if it swells large enough, all the local faults in the area are going to start popping off like crazy. Right. And they're going to, like big earthquakes, they're probably magnitude 5, magnitude and we have seen some quakes like that in Yellowstone before, especially during 2014, where there was, I believe, a, again, a 4.6, where uplift was just crazy, just for like a few months, and people were starting to get worried, but then it went back down. Yeah. So, yeah, that is very possible. Definitely. And at that point, we're basically Woody Harrelson in the movie 2012 <laughs> on the yeah. hill. <laughs> yeah, taking the eruption head on, yeah. you know? <laughs> well, Ben, you do great work, my friend. I appreciate you taking some time out of your, your busy life. I know you're a family guy, and I know how that is, so we appreciate it. What's what's the best way for people to uh, follow you other than uh, YouTube? What, tell everybody about your website. Oh, well, my website, it's uh, www.monitorsize.net, and, uh, you know, I got links all over my YouTube channel, but... Uh, it can teach you so many different things, how to find seismic data, how to analyze it, how to access it, even how to make your own plots, how to use the seismic analysis programs. And then I have multiple, multiple blogs on here showing you updates that I'm putting out for people and even some event examples showing people different types of earthquakes and what to watch out for. So it's kind of like a how-to website, kind of like a learning center that I'm just continuously updating over and over and over. So... It should help some people out if they want to monitor places themselves and do what I do every day. Yeah, we'll make sure we hook up everybody with your links and everything, too. And if, if I see a big mushroom cloud of ash appearing over Casper <laughs> Mountain, I'll, I'll give you a shout and let you know. <laughs> yes, yes, please do. But the thing is, I probably know about it before you guys. <laughs> if, if you if you see me on my roof with a shovel, then you'll know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't well, worry, I'll come over and help shovel it with you. I've never, I've never seen a volcanic eruption with my eye. I think I'd... That would be very interesting to see. I'm going to hold you to that promise, my friend. Well, thanks thanks, <laughs> thanks so much for your time, Ben. We appreciate it, man. And stay in touch, no and we'll, uh, we'll give you a shout if we see weird stuff going on. Awesome. Thanks for the opportunity.